Today we are going to save $3,000, what am I saying, $30,000, $100,000, a gazillion dollars, well, whatever your boat is worth on an alarm system to prevent it from sinking. Greetings sailors and welcome to a new episode of The Low Cost Sailor. Today's episode is going to be the first one in a series of episodes dedicated to try to prevent our boat from sinking. In these episodes we will talk about how to prevent and detect flooding, how to buy time and how to make a makeshift repair that will allow us to reach port and save the boat. But today we are going to talk about how to prevent and build a flood detection and early warning system that will allow us to buy time. And of course spending very little money, around $10 more or less. But first of all, let's set the scene a little bit. Boats actually sink. It may seem strange to us, but boats do sink. And it seems to be a direct consequence of their floating. Boats float because of Archimedes' principle. Every object submerged in a fluid experiences an upward vertical force equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. So they say, That means as long as our boat weighs less than the weight of the water it displaces, everything is fine. So, sinking a boat is relatively easy. If you make the boat weigh more than the water it displaces, it sinks. Saying it with other words, if you overload it, it sinks. What's the easiest way to overload a boat? Fill it with the closest and most abundant thing we have, water. Basically, if we fill our boat with water, it will sink. And that's usually the situation we want to avoid, a water leak. And preventing it is basically simple since boats are designed specifically to float. Although a boat can sink if it takes on water through the hatches, for example, in very rough seas or because rainwater gets inside and we neglect it for some time. The most common cause for this is a leak below the waterline, usually after a collision that can open a leak or, more commonly, due to a mechanical failure that causes a pipe or a through hull fitting to break or loosen around the propeller shaft. The usual recommendations for preventing flooding typically involve maintaining our boat, for example, regularly checking the seacocks and through hull fittings. My advice is to check them when your boat is out of the water. I learned this the hard way when I ended up holding the toilet through hull fitting in my hand the first time I took the boat out of the water to inspect the seacocks. So it's better if this happens while on dry land. Don't start banging on them to check if they're okay while you're in the water or you might mess up big time. I messed up big time. Closing the seacocks when you leave the boat in port or closing as many as you can when you're sailing in rough sea conditions is indeed a really good advice, but being honest, it can be quite a hassle. When we use the boat regularly, going around to close all the seacocks and especially remembering to open them before setting sail is important. We don't want to leave the engine without cooling. Honestly, I rarely remember to do it for all of them. And apart from that, another great piece of advice is maintaining the engine cooling system and the propeller shaft seal. That hole where the propeller shaft exits our boat can be a source of problems and water ingress. There are a few cases where an apparent leak in the boat is actually the engine spewing cooling water from a broken exhaust and throwing it inside. If we have a leak in the boat, the most important thing is to know about it and realize it as soon as possible. Time is crucial in this situation, so today we are going to focus on detection. When we have a water leak while sailing, it's normally easy to notice. Sooner or later we'll realize it, especially when the water reaches our neck. But it might take a while if we're outside in the cockpit until we notice. So the ideal is to have some sort of alert system that quickly notifies us, which is what we will look at today. If we're not on the boat, the situation can be even more dramatic because by the time we notice, the boat is likely already at the bottom of the sea. To give you an idea, a 2 cm hole below the waterline will take in about 50 liters of water per minute. 2 cm can be the average size of many of the through hull fittings on our boat, and one of 4 cm, for example, could be the size of the toilet fitting on a typical boat, can bring in 200 liters of water per minute into our boat. And if we consider a leak from a hole caused by a collision, something around, for example, 10 cm, which would be about this big, it would take in around 1200 liters of water per minute. Per minute. That can sink a 30 foot boat in quite less than 12 minutes. Time is the most important factor in this situation. The best thing is to know if we have a leak as soon as possible. So today we are going to focus on creating an alarm to alert us that the boat is sinking, allowing us to react as quickly as possible. Let's go shopping. 
We are going to see two different techniques to know if the boat is sinking at some point. One for when we are on board and another for when we are not inside the boat. The first and simplest is to install a system that activates when it detects water in our bilge, so we are alerted when that happens. This system basically involves buying some float switches. These float switches will allow us to close the circuit when they float due to water, enabling us to connect whatever we want at the other side of the switch. To that switch, we want to connect some type of siren. We are going to see two different options. The first option is to buy a small siren and modify it slightly so that it activates with the float switch. With that, we will achieve as follows. When the float rises, the siren will sound. If we're a bit hard of hearing, we might opt to buy a much louder and bigger siren like this one. But if we want to install a very loud siren, the switches we buy are designed for very small currents so they won't be able to control the siren directly. However, we can use a relay and to that relay, we can connect the very loud siren or even the bilge pump on our boat if it isn't automated yet. Finally, for when we are not on our boat, we will buy the most important thing, our bilge water detection sensor. This sensor, which costs less than $6, will allow us to detect when there is water in the bilge, and through our boat's Wi-Fi, it will send a notification to our mobile phone. Well, we've bought a bunch of items to show you, and now we'll see how each one works so you can choose the most suitable options. The first thing we'll look at is our float switch. When the float is down here, the circuit is open. When the float is up here, the circuit is closed. We can check this with our multimeter. We have it set to beep when there is conductivity. Okay, when it floats, it will beep. Okay, so the idea is instead of connecting a multimeter, let's connect something that sounds more, for example, this which is the classic door alarm and basically when it's active, if they are separated from each other. If we take one like this, I already have one here that I've half disassembled. What it has is the siren, the batteries. And here is a magnetic switch. We have taken and cut one of the ends. If we connect one point of this to the float switch and connect the other point to the alarm, we'll position it facing downward. As long as it doesn't float, it won't sound. When it starts to float, the alarm will sound. Another option, if we're a bit hard of hearing and decide to use this louder alarm, we would connect it to our battery or our 12 volt power source. One end would go to our magnetic switch, the other end would go to the negative terminal of our alarm and this one would go here. This alarm already consumes quite a bit, so if we connect it directly, the switch might burn out. When there is water and the float rises, Okay, this one is a bit loud. Imagine that if besides the siren we want to add something else. Instead of connecting the siren here, we could connect our bilge pump, but in that case we couldn't connect it directly like this. In that case, we would need to use a relay. The relay would be connected here and then the new switch would become these two contacts, which we would use for the outside. With this, the mechanical part is suitable for when we are on the boat. The other option is much simpler and will work well both when we are on the boat and when we are away from it. Our flood sensor. This is what we've received. It's very simple, with screws for mounting, and apart from that, it includes the sensor, double-sided tape for actual use, another double-sided tape for attaching the contact part, and here's the important part. We'll place this near the bilge, at the desired level, and this other part we'll place higher up so that water won't reach it for a while. The operation is very simple. We will have to put AAA batteries. With this, it'll be ready to stick wherever we want. This part will go upwards, and this will be what triggers the alarm if it comes into contact with water at any point. Let's install it. If we choose to use float switches, we can set up an installation similar to the one I have. Essentially, we've attached it to the bilge with a bracket, using epoxy resin or something similar. Be careful with screwing it in. Don't accidentally create a hole in the boat while trying to install the alarm, which could allow water to enter. So, we place the float switch with our brackets and then extend the cables to a useful location. In my case, and with considerable effort, because on old boats the hardest part is finding a path to run the cable, I extended it to the switch panel. There, next to the bilge pump's manual start button, I installed the relay and a switch in series with the float switch. 
So if the switch is closed and water enters, the float switch will also close its switch, activating the relay. It's up to you what to connect on the other side of the relay, a small siren or a very loud one if you're hard of hearing. With this setup, you would be alerted if you are on the boat yourself. If we're not on our boat and want to receive notifications that water is entering the bilge, we'll install our Wi-Fi module. It's straightforward, we put in the batteries, and if the contacts at the end get wet, the sensor triggers a flood alarm. We'll place the contacts in the bilge, at the point where we want to be notified if water reaches there. The other part of the sensor will be positioned high enough so that water takes at least a few seconds after activation to reach it, giving it time to transmit the alert. Exactly. We want the water to reach the sensor contacts, and if it takes 10 seconds to transmit the alert, during those 10 seconds the water shouldn't reach the sensor and disable it. That's it. We can secure everything with cable ties or use the double-sided tape that comes with the device. Setting it up will be very simple. First, you need to have Wi-Fi on the boat. If you don't have it, remember that we have an episode where we explain how to install Wi-Fi on your boat. Then, simply install your app, as we've seen in other videos. This app will allow us to receive notifications from the flood sensor. If you already have it installed, the flood sensor will appear along with any other sensors, such as door sensors, that you may have installed. In your app, with it already installed, you'll add a new flood sensor. It will ask for your Wi-Fi details, and that's it. You can review these steps in our low-cost boat alarm episode. And if you still don't have Wi-Fi on the boat, in that same episode, or in the one about how to install Wi-Fi on the boat, you'll find everything you need. From that moment on, everything will be up and running. In my case, if water starts entering the boat, the first thing that triggers is the Wi-Fi sensor. And I get an alert on my cell phone. I can even take the opportunity to connect the interior camera to see how serious it is. If the level continues to rise, The float switch activates the bilge pump, giving me then a few precious minutes to get there and try to fix the problem. From there, you'll need to rush to the boat, call someone from the harbor, whatever needs to be done to solve the problem, but that's something for the next episodes. That the boat sinks due to not realizing it and I'll tell you considering that most of the time it will be a very small leak slowly flooding the boat and many leave it for days or weeks. The point is for just $6 we can have a system that alerts us if there's water allowing us to react and potentially save the boat. I think it's crucial and for the price they cost on slightly larger boats you can even install more than one and pinpoint where the water is entering. This way you can distinguish whether it's rainwater or water entering directly through the bilge or running through the boat. Don't hesitate too much. As a result of making this video I've also taken the opportunity to not only install the Wi-Fi sensor in the bilge to monitor if the boat is flooding but also to automate the bilge pump which in my case wasn't automatic. And with those float switches and the relay I mentioned earlier, I've set it up so that now the bilge pump operates automatically. I now have peace of mind knowing that if water enters the boat, I'll receive a notification on my mobile phone. Additionally, the bilge pump will activate on its own, pumping out water at the necessary rate, giving me precious minutes, hours or even days to respond. That's my advice for today. There sure will be more episodes in this series on preventing the boat to sink, so don't miss them. We'll delve much deeper into how to react correctly once we know there's a leak, how to buy some precious time, and how to make temporary repairs to stop the leak and save the boat when needed. Thank you very much for your attention, sailors. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed our videos, give us a like, and you can find all the links to our social media below the video description. So, I'll see you in the next episodes of The Low Cost Sailor.